All right, let's get started. So first we're gonna set up our R script, save it to the folder where we saved our data, set our working directory, load the data, and then we're gonna look at that data and we're gonna talk a bit about uh, why it's structured the way it is, uh, in particular in the context of this analysis. Let's start a new R script, save it. I'm gonna call it demo decomposition. Save it where my data file is. And then I'm going to set my working directory to my source file location so that when I give a file name for a data file, R knows exactly where to be looking for it. All right, so let's load in the data. I'm going to use that read CSV function, autocomplete for the portal time series CSV. And then as always, We'll use the strings as factors equals false because otherwise it'll turn our dates, which we'll import as characters into factors for analysis. And that's not what we want. All right, let's run this line. Ah, it worked. That's always a nice feeling. And now we have our data that's loaded up and we can see it in our environment field. And I'm going to click on that to pull up the data that we've just imported into R. What we have here is data from my field site. This is monthly data starting in March of two uh, starting in March of 1992. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that it ends in November of 2014. I've given you three columns, rodents, which is a measure of the abundance or amount of rodent at the site rain, which is the precipitation in millimeters, and NDVI, which is an index of greenness that is being measured by satellites uh, in orbit around the Earth, and it can give us a signal of these kind of uh, the greening up and browning of, uh, of an ecosystem as it goes through these seasonal cycles. One of the important things to note about this data is that in this date column, it looks like the data is being collected extremely regularly, the 15th of every month for decades. And that's not actually true in our case. The easy methods for doing decomposition require regularly collected data. That could be monthly, it could be every two months, every four months, or yearly, but it has to be extremely regular and it can't have any gaps. And so what I have done is taken my time series, which is a realistic time series with gaps and irregularities and not exactly monthly data collection. And I have jury rigged it into place so that we have one of these very regular time series that we can use to explore how decomposition works. There are other methods, more complicated methods for dealing with irregular data. We're not going to cover that here because right now what we're really doing is going through these principles of how time series decomposition works. And then once you understand those principles, it'll be easier to use these other approaches. The other thing that should pop out at you after our tutorial from last week is our date column. And our date column is not in the ISO date format. I gave it to us in this very common format of month, day, year, and those slashes to divide up those, those pieces of information. And so before we go any further, I want everyone as a reminder from last week to go ahead and convert that date column into the ISO date format before we proceed any further.